finally, after a few slow months during the winter, April throughout all the platforms was a really strong one. Let's see some different categories of things I've been picking up and selling, and then let's see where I've been listing them and where they've been selling. So welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name's George. I haven't done this for a while. This is retro reselling. Boom. Boom. And I buy and sell mainly secondhand stuff. I basically buy them cheap, sell them online for a profit. That is my full-time business. Pre-2021, I was basically just selling on eBay and with a bit of Amazon on the side. But apart from Amazon, it was purely eBay. So if eBay was down, then I was down. If eBay was up, then I was up. And that was it. But since then, things have been changing. We've had some serious contenders coming along. We've got Depop, Etsy's been around and improving. Vinted is now here. And there's more on the horizon coming that are good in the US, like Poshmark. I keep hearing this name. It might be coming over to the UK, but it's not at the moment. We'll see the channel's been heavy on boot sale videos. Everyone loves a boot sale video. I enjoy them, you enjoy them. We need to see what stuff has actually been selling for. It's no good just picking up stuff, buying, 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 and then nothing sells. So let's see the other side of it when stuff's out the door and the customer has been receiving stuff. And how I've been doing that, and the sponsor of this video is Zip Sale. I've mentioned them before, I've done videos on it before, but I generally use it every single day when I'm listing. When it comes to cross-listing, there's nothing easier to handle that listing process. I can currently list on eBay, Etsy, Shopify if I wanted to, Depop and Vinted. If you wanna give ZipSale a go, my code will be down below for a free month of trial. So you can give it a go, learn the ropes, see if it does improve within the first month. But trust me when I say it really works and hopefully this video will show it. So the first category, I'm gonna go straight in with trainers. What platforms can I sell trainers on? What platforms actually sell the trainers? We have eBay, of course, eBay, I list everything on, everything and anything, as long as it's allowed. And as you know, throughout the boot sale season, I pick up a lot of trainers and footwear. This year has been no different. So let's go through some of the sales. So we're going to early April, picked up these Hugo Boss Mercedes like leather driving trainers in really, really good condition. I had to pay 15 pounds for these and I didn't mind doing that at all. I've picked these up before. Obviously we've got two brands combining, Hugo Boss and Mercedes in excellent condition. I was never gonna miss out. Obviously the better the brand, the better the sale is going to be. But when you can combine two brands together, especially like this, like you can get collaborations, you're always going to get strong prices, especially if it's limited edition and rare. These cost me a whole two pounds. And at the time, one of these back tags had actually come away. I've managed to fix that, it all looked good. So I've been able to sort of restore them lightly to their original condition. Two pound into 35 pound, nice quick sale. I've been able to fix it. So maybe someone picked these up before me and put them down because of that back tag, but I've been able to repair that, I've got positive feedback and yeah, a nice quick sale. Lovely, cheers, thank you. And another place to sell trainers is Depop. Not a collaboration this time, this is just a simple Hugo Boss trainer listed for $49.99 and Depop have actually recently introduced a best offer option type thing like eBay. So buyers can send you an offer, you can accept or reject it. There's no middle like counter offer. So that's something they could introduce or they need to introduce. So they sent me an offer of 42 pounds and yeah, I took that. Nice quick profit again. Hugo Boss with trainers, very good condition. What size were these? They were really good size, size 10. So yeah, nice big size. Depop, flat 10% plus the transaction fee of whatever that is. <laughs> so slightly cheaper than eBay, I believe, and a sale that's elsewhere. Also, when I get trainers, there is Vinted. Zero fees. I love Vinted at the moment. It's super quick to list, easy navigation of the app, and the best thing is about the zero fees. There is a fee, but it's when you're buying. So there's like a buyer protection fee that you, like if you go to buy some shoes, say £10, I think it's 5% gets added on. So like £10 for the trainers, 50p for the buyer protection, and then you buy the postage as well as the buyer. So as the seller, all I'm doing is listing it, naming my price, and that's it, listed away. Then obviously people can message you with offers, you can accept, and they still cover the fee, they still cover the postage. And I'm getting a lot of sales, including big sales like this one. A pair of Lokes, I paid up for these in a charity shop, I think it was 24 99 I paid, uh, which is obviously quite steep for a charity shop, especially when you're going to flip. But I knew, because they were basically like new condition, they were in great condition these were, I knew I could flip them quick. And they're a nice big size, I think they're a size 12 UK. I think I listed them for about 85 or 90 pounds on Vintage. Someone sent me an offer of 80, and of course no fees. 25 to 80 with no fees, I was always taking that. Vintage gave me my postage label, I just print it off, whack it on the 
parcel and off it goes. So we've covered shoes, let's move on to cameras. We've got Polaroids, 35 millimeter cameras, camcorders. I list on eBay, Etsy and Depop. You can actually sell the cameras on Depop. Got cheap and cheerful. This owes me £2.50, I think it was. Polaroid cool cam. Had a bundle of like cameras and everything. I was going through the boxes. I found a load of Polaroids and I'm pretty sure they were £2.50. I picked up three or four of them. Just a simple 90s Polaroid camera. It was missing the strap, which affected the price a little bit. That can happen with these. It can degrade or just snap off. But as long as you picture it and describe it as such, then you can still sell it. And then the biggest pickup of last month, you would have seen it, this clip. Mew. Olympus Mew cameras. I've got this one boxed, Olympus Mew 1. If it was the Mew 2, they go for up to like 250 to push in 300 pounds if it's in mint condition. This one was very good with the box and manual. I think this was 20 pounds. I had to pay for this camera. But obviously I knew exactly what it was, so did the other guy. 20 pounds for a strong camera like this and nice and small, nice and light. No problems posting or packaging it. Like I said, Etsy, you can also sell cameras. If, as long as it's vintage, you can sell cameras. I think I picked this up on the same day. This is an Olympus AF10 Twin. Just a 35mm camera. When it comes to testing it, I just simply battery test. Uh, so obviously put the battery in, make sure the flash works, turns on and off. This one here went for on Etsy. 59.99 plus postage. Not just them cameras, I was also selling Polaroids in there. Again, this was in the same bundle, £2.50 owes me, 35 99 This was the strongest Polaroid for some reason. Some just fetch more than others. The Autofocus 660, again, nice and clean. The buyer's happy, 35 99 on a different platform. Etsy this time, yeah, really strong. Then like I said, Depop, you can also sell cameras. It's like banging trend to have like vintage film cameras, especially when it comes to like arty film photography, stuff like that. And an unboxed version of the Olympus Mu 1, all in £129.99, plus postage, I believe. So actually, this got a stronger price point than the boxed one that I got on eBay. Maybe I could have held out for a bit more on eBay, but March wasn't the best of sales. April kicked off, I was getting these strong offers in. So I wanted to accept them, get that money in, and keep it rolling. We also have clothing, so similar to trainers and shoes, obviously. It's going to be listed on the same places, eBay, Depop, Vinted. If it's vintage, then Etsy. I've got this Noosa Monkey blazer from new subscribers from the boot sale. They signed up when I was there. Uh, I think I, they got £10 out of me. I was looking to get about £30, £35. Uh, a subscriber actually bought this from me. I believe it was Lisa. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, down below in the comments. But uh, we agreed on £25. So obviously after fees and that, I've probably doubled my money. Probably made £12 profit. But um, yeah, I was experimenting. I'm still experimenting with clothing, seeing what's what what styles to look for, what names to learn about. This Noosa Monkey seems decent. Probably could have got the 30 to 35, but of course, subscribers always get the best prices. And if you ever do see anything uh, you're interested in buying, hit me up on probably Instagram's the best place or on my emails. Again, they're down in the description below. So even though we're in spring, eBay still manages to get the coat sales, like stuff that's not necessarily needed right now. So winter coats, jackets i've still managed to sell this one this was a barber natural weathered like weatherproof uh, jacket this is really cool this was 15 pound in a charity shop it's got a really nice weathered look to it which is there on purpose and i got 50 pound for it plus 3.99 postage again that name barber always oh, gonna be worth good money of course we can't mention clothing without coming to depop uh, this was a size small levi strauss uh, denim jacket I got this when I went to the charity warehouse in Molden with Amy and Lenny. We bought the whole lot that day for £19. I'm way into profit already. And this was another £20 sale there. Again, thanks to Depop. There we go, that name again, Barber, £60. Always selling fast, always selling strong. On all the platforms as well, we've got a Barber Depop sale, £60. This one actually went to Brooklyn, New York, which was really cool. I believe they've received it safe from sound now, which is awesome. So you can ship internationally on Depop as well. It's not automatic like eBay global shipping program. They work out the price and everything. You've got to set your own prices, so make sure you set it right so you're not out of pocket. I wanted to share this sale uh, because it is an Etsy clothing sale. Not technically April, but it's the 1st of May, and it was early 1st of May. But I just wanted to show this one just to show that clothing does actually sell on Etsy. A vintage Aqua Scutum uh, Safari trench coat. This owes me, I think it was eight or 10 pounds. Size six, so quite small for women, but a nice strong price. And yet another platform to sell yet another different niche in. 
Got this coat here I picked up from the boot sale. I think this was five pounds, sold 42 pounds, no fees. This Tommy Hilfiger coat, down field, uh, women's size 16, 42 pounds from five. Again, zero fees. This was a satisfying pickup and a satisfying sale. 80 pounds for this Rab, or Rab, Rab, Rab. 2XL jacket, again, listed maybe 24 to 48 hours. It's sold on Vinted. This owes me five pound yet again from a boot sale. This is a brand I was unaware of at the start of this year. And it was actually a YouTube comment in one of my recent boot sale videos. I actually picked one of these up and put it back down again. I just scrolling through a pile of clothing. Apparently I missed it, never heard of it. I knew to look out for it and I found one, five pound. And that's going to 80 pound sale, 75 pound profit. Pure profit as well, vinted, no fees, awesome stuff. Another niche that I like is like vintage. Vintage windbreakers, especially when it comes into spring and summer. People go away camping or to the beach. They like a like original one, even if it's a bit mucky, a bit uh, water worn. This one was a bit sun worn and I still got 36.54, sent out offers to watches. Owes me five pound. Of course, Etsy, the home of vintage stuff. As long as it's 20 years old or you've handmade. So if you hand make stuff, you can list it on Etsy. But if it's less than 20 years there, you can't list it on Etsy. It's all about the vintage and handcraft stuff. Made a couple of sales on Etsy with furniture. We've got this one here, vintage G-Plan nest of tables. Had to pay 30 pounds for these at the boot sale, but they went for 118.99. I think that's with postage, 110 pound for the tables plus 8.99 postage, nice square box. Sticking with mid-century, I also picked this up. This was last year, I've had this for ages. I just kept putting it off and putting it off because I knew I had to do some tea coiling. It's all scratched up. But look at that price, a hundred pound plus postage for this mid-century lamp. I think I was actually asking 89.99 on eBay and no one took it on Etsy. It got the sale at 99.99, so I got 10 pounds more. Cheaper fees as well, win-win. I'll continue to list on their Etsy because people pay stronger prices. They pay the price you ask as well. And you don't tend to get time wasters and everything like that that other sites come with. Last category we'll stick to now is modern electronics. And this is one area where eBay gets its full attention. There's nowhere else really apart from Facebook that I'm not doing currently where you can actually list modern electronics. Obviously Depop you can sell cameras, but when it comes to the things I'm gonna show you, it's not really the marketplace for that. Etsy, modern, that's out of the question. Vinted doesn't do electronics as far as I know, not the stuff I'm selling anyway. So this is where eBay comes into its own. No marketplace I can think of apart from Facebook you can actually sell this stuff on. First of all, we've got this Baby Move Hide Grow Plus. It's like a humidifier for babies. Uh, I got this for, this was from a new subscriber as well. They subscribed at the time I was buying this. They saw the GoPro, uh, but this was 15 pounds I paid. Uh, I did offer it to Amy and Lenny. Uh, didn't really need it. I'm not really sure how it helps to be honest. No idea, out my depth. All I knew is, it was worth decent money. This is for 45.99. I sent offers out. This went for 39 pound 09 plus a bit of postage. So almost 40 pound, 15 to 40. Uh, a decent markup. Uh, wasn't too much of a pain because it came in its original box. It was easy to post out anyway. Also trying to find all different items to make money on. I didn't know this was worth money at the start, but I saw it on the table. It was at the end of the day. It was slow, so I could look for different things that I wouldn't necessarily pick up at the start of the day. Or start of the morning do a bit of research pick up new things and i've made money i know to look out for these now I know roughly what they're worth so if we can get them cheap that's another item in the noggin to look out for to make money on coffee machines as well as another sort of modern item that um i can only list on ebay at the moment or facebook like i said paid eight or ten pounds for it it's gone for 45 pounds uh, it's sold with their global shipping program. So this is off to Italy. Came again with its box, with all its bits and bobs, instructions, manual, everything, the absolute works. So this time, if it wasn't for eBay, I wouldn't be getting this sale at all. So on eBay for April, I sold a total of 92 items with the total sales coming in at 3,390 pounds and 75 pence. Etsy, I sold a total of six items for 358 pounds, 94 pence. Depop I sold seven items for a total of £313.99. And finally, Vinted, I sold 18 items for £496. No fees. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Zipzell. Again, links down below if you want to try it out free for a month. Hopefully, it increases your sales on different platforms. Don't just rely on one or two. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.